Hello, lads. How's it going? So today we're going to have a look at metals. All right. Um, it's something that's new to us. Okay. So we're going to have um, a nice in-depth look at it. All right. So if you want to lay your page out the way that I have it laid out here, all right, it might just help us speed up this video a little bit. Okay. So we've metals on top. We're going to look at where it's found. We're going to have a look at why we use metals. We're going to have a look at the properties of metals how to finish metals and then this down here in the bottom is basically there's three different types of metals or i suppose rather metals is broken up into three categories ferrous metals non-ferrous metals and alloys we'll have a look at each of those okay so the first thing is where are metals found all right so metals are a mineral which are found on the earth's surface okay Hopefully you'll be able to see this now. Okay, so we're going to have a look at a video which goes through, I suppose, how earth is extracted. Okay, so it's extracted using a process called, it's ored. Okay, so, um, yeah, we'll have a quick look at this. So basically, metal doesn't just come up as a raw material like we'll compare it to rock, where it's quarried straight out of the ground. All right. <clears throat> so metal comes up as a material which is um, mixed in, or I suppose mixed. Yeah, it's part of other materials. Okay. So when metal is ored or quarried out, okay, it comes, um, it comes up with rock, dirt, and all other sorts of materials and minerals okay so it needs to be cleansed down to give us a pure form of metal all right so we're just going to have a look at the process of extracting metals okay so basically here guys you can see a small little picture of um it looks like a large scale quarry okay so it's quarried with rock, all right? Um, to separate the ore from the waste rock, the rocks are crushed, okay? So that's the first step. Then minerals are separated out of the ore. There are a few methods in doing this. Um, the one that we're gonna have a look at is smelting, okay? Basically, that's where they roast the rock at a temperature greater than 900 degrees, okay? And it causes the rock to separate out into its layers, all right? And that's when the metal or the iron is extracted um, in a pure form, okay? So we're just gonna have a look at this video here which goes through it. Turning low grade ore into the most unique metal in the world starts at a 200 foot tall burnings. This is where the iron ore is hit with heat generated by a type of fuel called coke. Coke is the result of burning the impurities and the junk out of coal that we don't need to get to the good stuff, which is going to burn cleanly and give you the nice, hot, clean fire that you need to make steel. It's called the blast furnace because as the ore and coke flow downward, they're met by a 1,600 degree blast of hot air moving at 110,000 cubic feet per minute. The wind is coming in at what we call the Bosch level of the furnace through nozzles which are called tweers, and uh, we have 18 of them, depending on the size of the blast furnace, that air is pushing up through a solid burden material. The superheated air ignites the coke, like charcoal in a grill, and heats up the furnace to nearly 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the oxygen is finally blasted away, leaving pure molten iron. But it's also doing something even more amazing. As the heat from the melting layer strips oxygen, the carbon in the coke is bonding to the iron. You have hot glass going in, you have the material going in at the top of the furnace, and it's melting and it's melting, it's going down. Under the extreme heat, the mixture liquefies. Impurities like silica and sulfur rise to the top. The heavier iron sinks to the bottom, where it's drawn out in a glowing molten stream. Every 45 minutes, some 500 tons of molten metal, called pig iron, gushes from the tap. 
It's called pig iron because it was originally cast into molds resembling piglets suckling a sow. But ironically, though the iron has been freed from the oxygen, the molten pig iron that flows from the furnace has a new problem. Too much carbon. Over 4%, which makes the resulting metal much too brittle. To become steel, that number needs to be reduced to less than 2%. Okay, Before trying that's... to lose belly. So, look, that gives us a good idea of how um, metal is ored, okay, and how um, it's broken down into a pure form. All right, so when it comes out of the ground, it comes out with rocks, as you've just seen. It's heated at a temperature of over 900 degrees, and the pure iron is separated from um, the smelt and the waste and anything else that came up with it. And that's how you actually go about creating um, iron, okay? So the first thing here is it's found in the earth's surface, it's ored out, and has to be separated from the rock, okay? I'll just zoom in this here so you can see clearly. Um, the second thing is why do we use metals? Why do we go to all this bother when we could possibly just use timber, which is easier um, to make, all right? So metals are extremely strong. So depending on what type of metal you can get, um, they have huge strength in them, all right? Much stronger than timber and most other materials, okay? They can span large distances. So if you see large high-rise buildings going up or um, any type of commercial buildings, you'll see an awful lot of steel on them, okay? So in these buildings, they want big, large open spaces and steel is very good at spanning large distances and creating large open spaces because they're so strong they can cover a distance which is much greater than mud. Third thing is they're a good conductor of electricity and heat. So you'll see them used in electrical cables and you'll see them used in plumbing, okay? Um, plumbing there, the most common one is probably copper. So a lot of you might be familiar with that metal. The last thing here is it can be shaped and it can be molded fairly easily, okay? Um, so look, that's where it's found. That's just a few reasons why we use metals. The next thing we're going to look at is properties of the metals. All right, so we looked at properties of materials before. So basically the strengths are the positive um, attributes that metals have, okay? So the first one that um, I'm going to name is they're so strong, okay? So metals are an extremely strong um, material to use especially when you're using them in things like construction and places like that. So they're... Okay. Um, they're strong and they're also very solid. Okay, so very strong, very solid. They're good conductors of heat. Again, we mentioned the plumbing. Okay, so the plumbing in your houses, um, especially houses built more than 10 years ago, majority of the plumbing will be done in copper piping. More, I suppose, modern, modern heating systems will have um, Qualpex and plastic alternatives, okay? But um, cylinders and a lot of the important pipe work is done in copper, okay? So they're good conductors of heat and they're also good conductors of electricity. Okay. Um, the next thing is was they're very dense. Depending on what you're designing, what you're making, that might be a requirement. Okay. So when you think of things that need a lot of weight in them, all right, metal is a very good solution for that. Um, they can be worked and shaped rather easily. I'm gonna put a mold in here as well. Okay, so they can be bent into the shape. A lot of them, especially leads and lighter kind of metals. All right, they have a lot more flexibility. In them. All right, so another thing here, guys, is metals expand when they're heated. Okay, so you might have had, you might have come across this before in science. So they expand when they're heated and 
the last thing I suppose, some metals, okay, not all metals, some metals bend easily. Okay, so just to recap on that guys, they're very strong, they're good conductors of heat, okay, so the easiest example of this guys is if you had um, a pot of boiling water on your, your cooking ring at home, if you had um, a wooden, I suppose a wooden spoon inside it, and if you had a metal um, spoon inside it, the heat is going to transfer up through that metal spoon an awful lot quicker than the wooden spoon. So wood is not a good conductor of heat, metal is a, con a good conductor of heat. Okay, um, good conductor of electricity, so it's used for cabling, it's very dense, it's worked and shaped um, fairly easily, it's ex it expands when it's heated, okay, and again, they bend easily, all right, so they're just some of the main properties of metals, all right, we're going to come back to metal finishes in a few minutes. Um, the next thing we're going to have a look at is the three types of our three categories of metals. So we ferrous metals, non-ferrous metals, and alloys. Okay. So I suppose different types of metals fall underneath these three categories. All right. So the one that's most common for ferrous metals, we're going to have a look at, is cast iron. All right. So cast iron, lads, is something which you will have come across fairly often. Um, Especially if you if you see gates or railings that look like they're 50, 60 years old, most of the time they're made of cast iron. Okay, so they're very strong, okay, and very durable. Um, it, so just to break this down a little bit further, so cast iron um, contains iron, okay. All right, iron. All right is. So we had a look at how it's ored, right? So iron is ored. So let's just bring that down here. So so iron is ored and is processed in a furnace. All right, so. That's basically what we seen in that video. Okay. Um, it's then cast, or when I say cast, in farmer. So basically, if we were trying to create um, a railing from cast iron metal, you create formwork first, which is, we'd say, a big block of, we just use wood as an example for formwork, a big block of wood. You would take the shape that you want, the um, the cast iron fence, you take that out of the wood, and then you'd pour the molten metal into that cast. Okay. When the metal dries off or cures, you then take it out and you'll be left with a shape um, the exact same as what you took out of the wood. Okay, so that's what kind of casting is. All right. Um, I'm just gonna put in here, it's very common in gates plus railings. The majority of gates and railings you'll see, especially around town, the older ones, will be cast iron, okay? So we're just gonna have a look at um, one video here again of the cast iron process and how the molten metal is poured into the farmer, okay? So you can see that the metal now is molten. When I say molten, I mean, it's in a liquid state, and it's at a really high temperature. So you can see the mold in there dripping, guys, from the big container. On the right-hand side over here, we have our casts. So this is the shape that they want to have their cast iron, um, I don't know what they are. That's the shape that they want them to be. So basically he's just gonna pour that into the, the molds and let the iron dry off, the molten iron dry off. So that's the molten iron now that is being poured into the cast, into the formula.
So that's the first one filled and then he moves on. Okay, and that process is repeated over and over again. So, Okay, so that's how it was cast. Okay, and look, that will hopefully give you a little idea of the former. All right, so that's the first ferrous metal that we, I suppose, we are having a look at cast iron. The second one is going to be steel. Okay, so steel again, a really, really common one that you see in farm sheds and big industrial buildings. Most of them, if not all of them, are made from steel. Okay, so steel is a mix of iron and a carbon. All right, it's a mix of iron and carbon. There's three types. Okay, um, I'm just gonna, I'm stuck for a little bit of space here. So there's three types and I'm just going to name the three types. Okay, I'll zoom in this for anyone that can't see because my right now it needs to be small. So the first type is a high speed steel. Okay, so a high speed steel. Um, this is very hard. Okay, so when we speak about properties, this is the main property of that type of steel. It's really hard. The second one is a high carbon steel. Okay, high carbon steel. Again, areas where you'll see a high carbon steel is a lot, it's used a lot in tools. So the chisels in the woodwork room would be an example of high carbon steel. All right, so used an awful lot in tools and can be resharpened, reshaped, and I suppose that's why it is used in tools. All right, the last one is stainless steel. Okay, stainless steel is one that you should be most familiar with. Okay, it's used an awful lot in kitchen appliances. So that steel that's used in your fridge, in your sinks a lot of the, or even in your dishwashers that can be just wiped down really easily, that is stainless steel. Okay, so that's ferrous metals. All right, that's ferrous metals, metals complete. The two that we explored or cast iron and steel. Okay, cast iron using gates and railings, steel used in large sheds. Um, construction, I suppose there's three different types, high speed steel, which would be the ones used there in construction and sheds and things like that. Um, high carbon steel is tools. Okay, so that's kind of your chisels and stuff. Stainless steel, the easiest way to remember it is kitchen appliances. Okay, the second one that we're gonna have a look at is non ferrous metals. Okay, basically non-ferrous metals means that it contains no iron. All right, so that's the big difference between non-ferrous and ferrous metals. It contains no iron, all right. There are, I suppose we're gonna have a look at two types of non-ferrous metals. We're gonna have a look at aluminium. Do this in different color. Okay, um, aluminium is the most plentiful metal on earth. All right, um, uses. Okay, we'll just try and bring this back to places that you might see aluminium, um, where you, you see it in your pots and pans at home. Okay, so cooking equipment, um, aluminium is seen in cans, so cans of coke, metal of aluminium. Um, it has massive range of materials, okay? So cars, vans, all the panels and doors will be made out of aluminium also. Okay, so that's the first type of non-ferrous metal. The second type of non-ferrous metal we'll have a look at is copper. Okay, so copper piping is probably um, 
the one which you might recognize here. So copper is a pure metal. So when I say pure metal, guys, that means that copper is extracted from the earth also, okay? Um, the color of it, if you're not sure, is kind of a reddish brown color. All right, so if you see a metal that's reddish or brown, that's more than likely copper. Um, it's a very good conductor of heat, as we said early, earlier. Sorry, lads, hopefully you can see that, yeah. Um, a very good conductor of heat, a very good conductor of electricity. It's easy to cut and shape. Okay, so uses, where will you see copper? You will see it in, I suppose, in heating systems. In wiring. You can see it also, guys, as a finish that might be put on the external face of the building. Um, I'll just have a Google of this year and might, might have a look at some copper finishes on buildings. Okay, so this here, guys, this is the reddish green or the reddish brown kind of a color. Okay, that's the, I suppose, the color of copper when it's first put on a building. You can see that after years, okay, it weathers or it, it kind of reacts with the, the, the rain, okay, and it'll turn to a green color. All right, so if we look at this here, you can see the green fades on this. You can definitely see it in this chart here. Okay, so it's not um, a finish that's used too often around the place, but in high quality buildings, it is used fairly often. Okay, down in UL, in the University of Limerick, I think there's a copper, there's copper finished buildings on there. You'll also see them in a few um, churches up around Dublin, up around Dublin. There are some copper finished buildings up there also. Okay, so. That's our non ferrous metals. Non ferrous metals contain no iron. The two examples are aluminium and copper. Okay. Alloys is the last one. Alloy is a mixture of two or more metals. All right. So. Okay. So it's a mixture of two or more metals. Um, common, I suppose, alloys are. Um, zinc, lead, and brass. So it's a mixture of two or more two or more metals. All right. So we'll just explore one of these. All right. I want to keep you two down. We'll just have a look at brass. So brass is copper and zinc combined. Okay. To give us the material which is known as brass. All right. So it's copper and zinc. All right, so it's a mixture of those two materials. Brass, that's where is this used? Um, it's used for, I suppose, door hinges. That's door hinges there, I don't know, the, the writings are great. Musical instruments, if you look at saxophones and things like that, they're brass. Okay, and um, there's a range of other uses to just give you a small little flavor, okay? Zinc and lead, I'm just gonna bring these two over here. Okay, I'm gonna bring these together. All right, so zinc and lead, guys, you'll see uses as a roofing material. You'll be common with the phrase, um, something sinking like a ball of lead. All right, so lead is used for fishing as a weight at the end of the fishing line. Okay, so it's a really dense, heavy material. Um, the last thing that I want to have a look at, guys, is zinc. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at metal finishes and zinc is, I suppose, very important when it comes to finishes. All right, so just to finish off here, uses are roofing materials. Um, like you can have loads of other uses, but roofing materials is probably the easiest one. You see lots of lead and zinc on roofing materials. Okay, so, the next part of this here, guys, is just 
or the last part is finishing metals. All right, so when we speak about woodwork, we put a finish on wood, which is often a varnish or a wax or something like that, okay? It's just to preserve and keep, keep, the, um, keep the material and keep the timber safe. Tim, or metal is the exact same. So the main thing with metal is you do not want the rusting because the rust will corrode and eat through the metal, all right? So um, the three different types of finishes are, we can put a painted finish on, we can spray a finish on, or we can dip the dip the metal. Okay, we'll have a look at dipping the metal in a video, just to explain that a little bit more to you. Um, so the first thing here, guys, I suppose, is um, ferrous metals. erode easily and rust easily, okay? So I think you should know what rust is. That brown dry material that comes off the metal, all right? So ferrous metals, so when we look back at ferrous metals, ferrous metals were the ones used uh, are mainly cast iron and steel, okay? So using sheds and railings, all right? So they rust very easily, and that's why you'll see the most railings should be painted once a year or so, all right? And that's to stop it from rusting, to stop it from eroding. Okay, before they're painted, before any, any metal is finish, finished, so before it's painted, sprayed or dipped, okay, they need to be clean. And rust free. Okay, so any dirt, any rust, any bacteria, any grease, anything on the metal needs to be stripped off before you can put a finish on it. Okay, um, when you've the metal cleaned off, you need to put a primer on it. Okay, that's basically to protect what protect the metal. And once you've that done, you undercoat it. And then you can put a few finish coats on it. All right, so just in the book here, there's a good little um, picture of putting finishes on metal okay so you can see that this is the, the raw metal here all right it's cleaned and any grease any rust is removed we didn't put a rust primer so again that's just to protect the metal then you put two undercoats all right so again you're just building the layers here and the finished coat any color you want you can put a finished coat which will just give it a really good look and make it aesthetically pleasing all right so the last thing that we're going to do here, lads, that we're going to have a look at, the last thing that I want to zone in on is dipping the metal. All right, so dipping is basically where you catch all the metal, all right, whatever it is, might be a gate, might be a railing, and you it's put into a bath of molten metal. Okay, so it's put into a bat of molten metal. Molten metal means that it's in a liquid form. So basically you catch the gate, you put it into um, extremely hot molten metal and you pull it back up and you just let whatever excess um, molten metal, you let that drip off and then it dries out, okay? The most common, commonly used metal for dipping is this one here, or zinc. All right, so. That's the most commonly used metal for dipping. All right, so the last video that we're gonna have a look at is the galvanizing process. All right, so you'll hear it as a shed being galvanized or even a slurry tank being galvanized or a trailer being galvanized. Basically, that's a very high quality finish, which will stop it from rusting and stop any corrosion um, happening on that, okay? So this is the molten metal here now, guys. This is zinc. That's just some metal uni strut. And they're after dipping that into the zinc. Okay, and now they're rising it back up, as you can see. And the zinc will leave a coating all around any piece of metal that it came in contact with.
Okay, that's perfect. That should give you a good idea of the, of the difference. So this is your molten method here, guys. All right. It's dipped in, pulled straight back out. Any excess metal is left to drip off it. And yeah, that's about the size of it. Okay, so. Just going back to the sheet. At the end of your sheet, guys, you should have something which resembles what I have here. Okay, just try and get as much information as you can into it. Keep it nice and clean. And yep, that's, that's metals covered. Okay, so thanks very much.